Today, we're going to look at locking down Ubuntu with App Armor and Fire Jail on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. After hardening our Ubuntu installation against physical and network threats, the next thing to do is to protect ourselves against malicious applications. Now the key to this is sandboxing, which is basically the concept of making sure that every application on your system has the least bit of privilege that it absolutely needs to do what it's designed to do. This means we'll be downloading some custom profiles for both AppArmor and FireJail in order to make sure that the applications we're sandboxing have the proper permissions for themselves to run and nothing more. Now when a hacker breaks into your system, they'll typically use available tools in order to do whatever it is they're going to do. So if you've properly locked these tools down, then fortunately they shouldn't be able to get away with anything that they're trying to plan. Now, if you get confused on this, you can check out the awesome Nullbyte article linked in the description, written by Tokyo Neon. And I also recommend you check out his Twitter, at Tokyo Neon underscore, to follow him and find some more of these awesome guides, because this whole series is by him, and I'm really impressed by it. In order to follow along, you'll need a fully updated Ubuntu machine, and I recommend you check out the other two guides in order to get caught up with this one. Once you're caught up, then we can begin. In order to get started locking down the applications on our system, we need to actually take a look at where they're first installed and maintained from. Now, the Ubuntu community isn't completely homogenous when it comes to where we're pulling our files and updating everything from. There are repositories that don't go through the same kind of open source scrutiny that a lot of the other community repositories do. And they've been separated into various sections just in case you're worried about security like we are. So if you go to the software update section, then we should be able to take a look at the various types of sources that we're pulling from and disable repositories that basically don't meet the standard uh, that we're looking for in terms of transparency and the ability to audit what's in there. Now, these might be things like proprietary software drivers where they just give you a binary that you can't really look inside and figure out what's going on. It might uh, be something that is paid software, but either way, it's not free and it means that it's more difficult to audit exactly what it's doing. So we'll go ahead and click on settings. And then in the uh, Ubuntu software section, you can see that there's a number of different uh, downloadable from the internet sources, um, including main, universe, restricted, and multiverse. So what we wanna do if we are particularly concerned about this is to disable the multiverse and disable, oh, I need a password. and disable the restricted. Now, both of these, again, include non-free code, which can be an issue if you care about that sort of thing. So we'll also go to the other software and make sure that the uh, canonical partners are disabled. Uh, and that should make sure that the packages we are installing from will actually um, go ahead and be uh, secure and not from some random sketchy developer who might change something and then make it impossible for the community to actually know what was changed. We can also go to updates and see that there's uh, some other things we can uncheck. We can get rid of backports, which is something that is not uh, totally uh, like continually uh, like updated to improve security. So uh, these unsupported updates we can basically get rid of and make sure that we're, our system isn't loading anything that could degrade its security. So of course, if we want to then uh, update, we can close and the information about available software is out of date. We'll go ahead and reload this. Um, so what we're going to do next is, well, if I had a faster internet connection, we would open a terminal window and we would just run a apt get update and apt get dist upgrade. So I'll type these out so you can see them. But one thing you should be aware of is if you're in the middle of a pen test, it is the worst time in the world to do this. You do not want to do this when you are, um, you know, relying on this to basically <laughs> not be stuck updating for a very long time. It can be quite frustrating in order to uh, actually have this start updating and then just take hours. So depending on the speed of your computer, sudo a oops, 
apt get update will update all of the list of applications. And then the next command, which is apt get dist upgrade, is basically upgrading your entire distribution. Uh, sudo apt get dist upgrade. Run this one with caution because while it will upgrade everything based on the update you just did, it will also probably take forever, which uh, yeah, can, can really be um, a little bit annoying. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is app armor. And app armor is a kernel enhancement that basically allows us to make sure that various applications can't do things they're not supposed to. Now to check to make sure that this is installed by default on Ubuntu, we can type sudo aa tax status. And you can see we have uh, zero processors are in complain mode, zero processes are uh, unconfined. We have only two processes with profiles defined, and that means we basically set up rules so that apps are appropriately sandboxed and they're not basically able to do stuff that they're not supposed to do. Uh, so if we wanna go ahead and add some additional profiles, we can do so by adding the app armor utilities. Uh, the way that we'll do that is by typing apt, oh, sudo, apt get install app armor profiles and app armor utils. We'll go ahead and type Y for yes. And this should go ahead and download the packages we'll need to start both implementing new profiles and even writing some of our own if we want to. So this will have a lot of different profiles in it. And to enforce them, we can type uh, AA, tack enforce. Oops. Uh, we'll need to do sudo AA enforce. And then the name of the policy that we want to run, which is slash etc app armor dot d slash and then asterisk for everything. Let's see if that works. Whoa, okay, cool. So now we are enforcing all of these policies uh, and you'll notice that they're tailored to these individual applications so that we can uh, basically ensure that we're not running these with permissions that they don't need. Now these are really cool because it means that when we're running an application, we're running the most secure version of it because it can't bust out and do a bunch of stuff that it wasn't designed to do in the first place. The final step is going to be to go to the SourceForge page and actually download the file so that we can go ahead and have our version of FireJail. So we'll go ahead and go to SourceForge.net. And here you can see it's a slash project slash fire jail slash files. And under fire jail, we should be able to find a deb file. Okay. So we're looking for um, amd64.deb. We can go ahead and click on here to download it. And uh, there, you should also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description for instructions on how to verify this. I'm going to keep to just downloading it for now, but uh, here we go. Once we have finished downloading this file, then we'll be able to install FireJail and have it running properly on our system. So I will exit out here. Now the next step, as soon as it's downloaded, is to go into our files. We will locate in the downloads section the deb file, and to install it, we can go ahead and just use the uh, dpkg command. So we'll go ahead and type dpkg, and we can drag and drop the file in here just to get the location easily. And this should go ahead. Uh, oh, tacki. So we'll have to add tacki and sudo to install it. Cool. So it's going to go ahead and unpack and set up FireJail. And this will allow us to test out that we have it done by uh, typing FireJail. Tack tack help. Cool. All right, there we are. So we're going to go ahead and test this out by using FireJail to open up a sandbox browser.
Now this is useful because if we're going to something that might have a malicious plugin or something like that, we can ensure that we're not really interacting with the core system processes by typing fire jail, tac tac s e c c o m p for secure computing, w uh, no write privileges, private TMP, which gives it a temporary folder. And then the name of the application we want to sandbox, which is Firefox. I guess two dashes. There we go. So now we've opened a Firefox browser window, but this time it is sandboxed and will be prevented from doing anything that it's not supposed to do. This application can be used for pretty much anything. So if you want to uh, take an application and put it into uh, uh, Fire Jail, you can just run it basically the same way and it will deny permission to anything that this application isn't supposed to be running. After locking down our Ubuntu system with Fire Jail and App Armor, we should be relatively secure against someone trying to abuse the network tool or something else on our system to do something nefarious. Now this is an advantage because if we happen to slip up, and everyone does eventually, then we might be a little bit more protected because we've set the minimum possible privilege, which is pretty much the point of secure computing. Now we, we are going to do one more tutorial, but we're about 75% of the way done on hardening our Ubuntu system. So at this point, we've protected ourselves against applications that are malicious via sandboxing, network attacks via making sure that we've minimized our surface area for attack, and then also USB rubber ducky attacks by making sure we're not accepting any sort of foreign USB keyboard. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you get confused on this episode, you can always check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description, written by Tokyo Neon. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.